Thrown once on the shores of a Russian lake, a rescue vest attracted more attention than millions of other items found near the water. Moreover, it became the cause of a massive investigation that eventually led to the discovery of an ancient tunnel belonging to an unknown civilization. Whose vest was it and what happened to the person wearing it? How is the rescue vest connected to the tunnel from an unknown civilization? In this video, we delve into the history of the discovery of this ancient tunnel. In 2003, in the vicinity of Senchnogorsk, a mysterious event occurred. Vladimir Saichenko, a driver from the Vedeshenskaya village administration, discovered a U.S. rescue vest in Lake Biesdone. What shocked everyone was that the vest had an identification inscription indicating that it belonged to seaman Sam Belovsky from the destroyer Cole, which was bombed in the port of Aden, Yemen in October 2000. Four sailors tragically died and ten others, including Sam Belovsky, went missing. Witnesses and participants of the described event identified the rescue vest as the inscription on it directly pointed to Seaman Sam Belovsky. However, how did a rescue vest from a ship in the Indian Ocean end up in a lake lost in the vast expanses of central Russia? What was its route? Based on this, some scientists have come to the conclusion that there are unknown underground passages connecting deep parts of the continents. But who created these tunnels? When and why were they built? Researchers from different continents have repeatedly noted that in addition to subway tunnels, bunkers, mines, and natural caves, there are other underground passages created by civilizations that existed before modern humans. These passages are not only represented by gigantic halls with walls processed by unknown mechanisms, displaying secondary natural processes such as deposits, stalactites, stalagmites, and cracks, but also in the form of linear structures, tunnels, in fact, the beginning of the 21st century marked an increase in the number of underground passages discovered on different continents. Identifying them is a complex task that requires deep knowledge of underground construction technology and the mechanisms of transforming the Earth's crust throughout our planet's history. However, it is entirely feasible, considering that the main difference between these tunnels and natural or modern underground objects lies in the fact that many of these ancient creations display perfection and astonishing precision in wall processing. They also possess enormous dimensions and an age beyond human comprehension. Nevertheless, it cannot be claimed that all tunnels appeared at the same time. Here are some of the tunnels that researchers have managed to discover. The Marble Cave, located in the Chattadag mountain range at an altitude of 900 meters above sea level, is well known in Crimea. At the entrance to the cave, visitors are greeted by a massive hall in the shape of a 20 meter tube, which is currently half filled with boulders that collapse due to numerous earthquakes. Stalactites hang from cracks in the arch while stalagmites reach up towards them, creating a mesmerizing effect. Few people pay attention to the fact that originally it was a tunnel with perfectly smooth walls that stretched deep into the mountain range, sloping towards the sea. Surprisingly, the walls have been well preserved and show no signs of erosion. Part of the tunnel starts at a height of about 1 kilometer from the Black Sea. Considering that the Black Sea Basin was formed about 30 million years ago as a result of a large asteroid impact that fractured and destroyed the main ridge of the Crimean Mountains, it can be assumed that the Marvel Cave is a fragment of an ancient tunnel with the main part located in the asteroid-affected mountain range. According to recent reports from Crimean sapeleologists, a massive cave has been discovered beneath the I Pietri Massive, which rises picturesquely above Alupka. 
Additionally, tunnels connecting Crimea and the Caucasus have been found. UFO researchers from the Caucasus region, during one of their expeditions, determined that there are tunnels beneath the Uvarov Ridge, opposite Mount Aras. One of these tunnels leads towards the Crimean Peninsula, while another extends to the cities of Krasnodar, Yesk, and Rostov-on-Don towards the Volga region. An offshoot towards the Caspian Sea was also discovered in Krasnodar Krai. Unfortunately, the expedition participants did not share any additional details. In 1980, not far from the shores of California once again, a vast hollow space was discovered, extending hundreds of meters deep into the continent. It is possible that one of the pivotal stations of the underground tunnels was found. The existence of these tunnels is also indicated by the fact that nuclear tests conducted at great depths on a well-known range in Nevada had an unexpected effect. Two hours later, in Canada, a military base located 2,000 kilometers away from the Nevada range, radiation levels were recorded that were 20 times higher than normal. How could this happen? It turned out that there was a massive cave near the base, which was part of a vast system of caves and tunnels beneath the continent. In 1963, during the excavation of a tunnel, they encountered a massive door, behind which marble steps led downward. Perhaps this was another entrance to the tunnel system. Unfortunately, it is unknown where exactly this occurred. In the state of Idaho, anthropologist James McKinney explored a large cave and progressed several hundred meters along a wide stone tunnel before being halted by an unbearable smell of sulfur. Horrifying remains of human skeletons and distinct sounds emanating from the depths. As a result, the exploration had to be discontinued. There is another vertical shaft that has long been known in the Caucasus, in a gorge near Gelenzeik. People who have seen it describe it as straight as an arrow, with a diameter of about 1.5 meters and a depth of over 100 meters. Furthermore, its surface is smooth, as if the walls were melted. Studies of its properties have revealed that both thermal and mechanical effects occurred simultaneously on the walls, creating a crust of 1 to 1.5 millimeter thickness in the rock, giving the wall an extraordinary strength that cannot be replicated even with modern technologies. Additionally, the shaft exhibits a high level of radiation. It is possible that this is one of the vertical paths connected to a horizontal tunnel leading from this area to the Volga region, towards the Medveditska Ridge. It is known that in the post-war years, the Council of Ministers of the USSR issued a secret decree for the construction of a tunnel through the Tartar Strait to connect the mainland with the Sakhalin Island by railway. Over time, the secrecy surrounding this project diminished, and in 1991, Dr. L.S. Berman, a doctor of physical and mechanical sciences who worked there at the time, revealed in her memoirs to the Valorance branch of Memorial that the builders were not so much constructing as they were restoring an already existing tunnel, which had been laid in ancient times with exceptional expertise, taking into account the geology of the Strait's floor. Strange findings in the tunnel were also mentioned, such as inexplicable mechanisms and petrified animal remains. All of this later disappeared into the secret bases of the intelligence agencies. Therefore, P. Miroshnichenka's claims that our country and the Far East are riddled with tunnels are not without foundation, and it is not excluded that this underground passage leads further through Sakhalin to Japan. Now let's move to Western Europe, specifically to the border between Slovenia and Poland, to the mountain ranges of Tatras and the Biscuits. Here stands the Queen of the Biscuits, Babia Gora a mountain with a height of 1,725 meters. From ancient times, local residents have kept a secret association with this mountain. As told by a man named Vincent, in the 1960s, he and his father, at his insistence, 
set out from their village to Babiaguda. At an altitude of 600 meters, they moved aside one of the protruding rocks, revealing a large entrance that could easily accommodate a horse-drawn carriage. The open tunnel, oval in shape, was straight as an arrow, wide and tall enough to fit an entire train. The smooth and shiny surface of the walls and floor appeared to be covered in glass. It was dry inside. The long path through the inclined tunnel led them to a spacious hall shaped like a huge barrel. It contained several paths, some of which had a triangular cross-section while others were circular. According to Vincent's father, these tunnels could take you to different countries and continents. The left tunnel leads to Germany, then to England, and further to the American continent. The right tunnel stretches to Russia, to the Caucasus, then to China and Japan, and from there to America, where it connects with the left tunnel. Apparently, it is also possible to reach America through other tunnels laid beneath the north and south poles of the Earth. On the way of each tunnel, there are junction stations similar to this one. According to his words, these routes are currently active and the advancement of UFOs has been observed along them. A message from England indicates that during the construction of a tunnel for practical purposes, miners heard sounds of working mechanisms coming from below. When they broke through the rock lair, the miners discovered a staircase leading to a well, and the sounds of working mechanisms intensified. However, no further information was reported about their subsequent actions. But it is possible that they accidentally stumbled upon one of the vertical shafts of the horizontal tunnel coming from Germany, and the sounds of working mechanisms indicated its operational state. As it turns out, the American continent is also permeated with ancient tunnels. Andrew Thomas, a renowned researcher, is convinced that ancient underground vertical and horizontal paths have been preserved beneath America some of which are in pristine condition. According to him, these tunnels traverse the entire continent. One of the junctions, where several shafts converge, is Mount Shasta in California. From there, the paths lead to the states of California and New Mexico. Confirmation of this comes from a case involving Iris and Nick Marshall, a couple who, in the vicinity of a small California town called Bishop, ventured into a cave in a mountainous area known as Casa Diablo. The walls and floor of the cave were unusually smooth and polished, reflecting a mirror-like gleam. Strange hieroglyphic writings were inscribed on the walls and ceiling. Small openings were present on one of the walls, emitting weak beams of light. While exploring the cave, the couple heard a peculiar noise coming from underground, prompting them to hastily leave the premises. Perhaps they too accidentally stumbled upon one of the entrances to an underground tunnel, which turned out to be operational. In Mexico, in one of the most deserted and sparsely populated areas, there is an ancient cave called Santano de las Galandrinas, which has a depth of over a kilometer and a width of several hundred meters. Its sheer walls are perfectly smooth and polished. The bottom of the cave forms a labyrinth of various rooms, passages, and tunnels that branch out in different directions at this depth. Could this be just one of the junctions of intercontinental tunnels? South America is not lagging behind North America in terms of tunnels. In recent studies conducted by Professor Erich von Denken, multi-kilometer tunnels have been discovered beneath the surface of the Nazca Desert, through which clean water still flows. In June 1965, in Ecuador, Argentinian explorer Juan Moritz discovered and mapped an unknown system of underground tunnels and ventilation shafts within the territory enclosed by the cities of Galalopez, San Antonio, and Yopi in the province of Morana, Santiago. The total length of this system is hundreds of kilometers. The entrance to the tunnel system resembles a neatly carved opening in the rock formations, the size of a barn door. 
Descending onto sequentially arranged horizontal platforms leads to a depth of 230 meters. Here, rectangular tunnels of varying widths and with 90-degree turns are found. The walls are smooth, as if glazed or polished. Ventilation shafts with a diameter of about 70 centimeters and rooms the size of concert halls are strictly and periodically located. It was discovered that, in the center of one of these rooms, there are structures resembling a table and seven thrones made of an unknown material similar to plastic. Next to the so-called throne area, large golden figures of fossilized lizards, elephants, crocodiles, lions, camels, bison, bears, monkeys, wolves, jaguars, and even crabs and snails were found. In the same hall, there is a library consisting of several thousand metal embossed plates measuring 96 by 48 centimeters with some kind of symbols. Each plate is stamped in a special way. Juan Moritz also found a stone amulet with an image of a human figure standing on a globe. The tunnels and chambers are abundant with piles of golden artifacts. These include discs and plates with various drawings and symbols. There are also carved dinosaur images on the walls. The plates depict pyramids constructed from blocks, and the symbol of the pyramid is often accompanied by flying serpents in the sky. Hundreds of such images have been found. Some plates feature astronomical concepts and ideas of astronomical journeys. Without a doubt, Juan Moritz's discovery partially unveils the mystery of who constructed the tunnels, their level of knowledge, and the era in which it took place. In 1976, a joint English-Ecuadorian expedition surveyed one of the underground tunnels near Los Tayos on the border of Peru and Ecuador. There, a chamber was discovered with a table surrounded by chairs with backrests over two meters tall made of an unknown material. Another chamber resembled a long hall with a narrow passage in the middle. Along the walls were shelves with ancient books, thick folios with around 400 pages each. The text on the sheets was written in an unknown script using pure gold. Undoubtedly, the tunnels and chambers were used not only for transportation, but also as repositories of valuable information. Five years earlier, a speleological expedition in Peru discovered caves whose entrances were blocked by rocky blocks. Overcoming them, the researchers discovered a massive hall at a depth of about 100 meters, with a floor paved with blocks featuring a distinctive relief pattern. The polished walls had enigmatic inscriptions resembling hieroglyphs. Numerous tunnels branched down from the hall. Some of them led to the sea, while others extended underwater and continued down to the seabed. In Southeast Asia, numerous mysterious underground tunnels have also been discovered. The famous Shambhala is located in numerous caves in Tibet, connected by underground passages and tunnels. It is said to house its initiated ones in a state of samadhi, neither alive nor dead, sitting in the lotus position for hundreds of thousands of years. According to some researchers, such tunnels were used for various purposes, including the preservation of Earth's gene pool and what they refer to as fundamental values. It is well known that there are pyramids and ancient temple ruins on the Giza Plateau in Egypt. However, little is known about what lies beneath their surface. Recent research by scientists indicates that beneath the pyramids, within the plateau, there are enormous unexplored underground structures. Researchers speculate that this network of tunnels extends for tens of kilometers, reaching towards the Red Sea and the Atlantic Ocean coastline. Now let's recall the results of the research on tunnels in South America that extend beneath the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. It is possible that they are converging with each other. In the northwest of China, in the sparsely populated and desert region of Quihan Province, located in Tibet, near the city of Waiacheng, stands Mount Biagongshen, surrounded by freshwater and saltwater lakes. 
On the southern shore of the saltwater Lake Tosun, a solitary cliff with caves rises 60 meters above the ground. In one of the caves, a rust-covered pipe with a diameter of 40 centimeters protrudes from the upper part of a wall that is smooth and clearly of artificial origin. Another pipe goes underground and 12 smaller diameter pipes ranging from 10 to 40 centimeters are embedded near the cave entrance. They are arranged parallel to each other. On the lake shore and in the vicinity, numerous iron pipes, 2 to 4.5 centimeters in diameter and oriented from east to west, can be seen protruding from the rocks and sand. There are also smaller openings, only a few millimeters in diameter, but none of them are clogged. Such pipes have been discovered both protruding from the lake or hidden beneath its depths. Upon analyzing the composition of the pipes, it was found that they contain 30% iron oxide, a significant amount of silicone dioxide, and calcium oxide. The composition indicates a long process of iron oxidization and suggests their ancient origin. All of these, including the caves and pipes, are remnants of structures that possibly served as launch pads for rockets and spacecrafts. Erected in the distant past by representatives of an extraterrestrial civilization, they might be related to the construction of underground tunnels worldwide after these beings were unable to leave Earth for some reason. In the Hunan province of China, on the southern shore of Lake Dantinghu, southwest of the city of Wuhan, near one of the Round Pyramids, Chinese archaeologists discovered a sealed passage that led them into an underground labyrinth. The stone walls were incredibly smooth and meticulously crafted, leading scientists to rule out a natural origin. One of the many symmetrically arranged passages led the archaeologists into a large underground chamber with walls and ceilings adorned with numerous drawings. One of the drawings depicted a hunting scene with beings sitting in a circular ship resembling a UFO hovering above. Humans with spears were chasing an animal, while the flying superhumans above them aimed at the target with objects resembling guns. Another drawing portrayed ten spheres evenly spaced around a central point, resembling the arrangement of the solar system with the third sphere representing Earth and the fourth sphere representing Mars connected by a loop-shaped line. This suggests a possible connection between Earth and Mars. The nearby pyramid's age has been determined by scientists to be 45,000 years, but the tunnels could have been constructed and utilized much earlier. Recently, during expeditions, the well-known Medveditska Ridge, located in the Volga region, was extensively explored. As a result, an extensive network of tunnels spanning tens of kilometers was discovered and mapped. The tunnels have a circular, sometimes oval cross-section with diameters ranging from 7 to 20 meters, consistent width amongst their entire length, and depths ranging from 6 to 30 meters below the surface. As the tunnels approach a hill along the ridge, their diameter increases from 22 to 35 meters, then to 80 meters. And at the highest point, the cavity reaches a diameter of 120 meters, curving beneath the mountain and culminating in a massive hall. From there, three additional tunnels branch off at various angles. Researchers speculate that these tunnels could lead not only to the Caucasus and Crimea, but also to the northern regions of Russia, Novaya Zemya, and further to the North American continent. Some individuals even believe that the tunnels are currently functioning and used as transportation routes and bases for UFOs. It's no wonder that P. Miroshnichenka, in the book Legend of the LSP, suggests that our entire country, including Crimea, Altai, the Urales, Siberia, and the Far East is permeated with tunnels. The challenge remains in discovering their precise locations. In most cases, such discoveries happen by chance. 
For example, Evgeny Chesnikov, a resident of the village of Silavne in the Vodons region, once fell into a pit that turned out to be a cave with tunnels branching off in different directions and symbols on the walls. But that's not all about these mysterious underground tunnels. In the Middle East, in Syria, near the city of Aleppo, there is also an astonishing geological feature known locally as the sinkhole. It is in a hilly, arid area, but as you approach one of the hills, you will be amazed to see a massive cavity with sheer walls plunging to depths of 70 meters and a diameter of 120 meters instead of a hilltop. How could this have happened seemingly out of nowhere? According to local residents, the sinkhole formed instantly in a single day in ancient times. Initially, a hole with a diameter of about 10 meters appeared at the bottom, which subsequently expanded. It became evident that for such a volume of rock to collapse, there must have been a cavity beneath it, containing no less than 1.6 million cubic meters of soil since the loosening of rock volume increases at least twofold. Now, knowing about the possible existence of a network of tunnels around the globe, some of which are partially submerged, partially dry, and partially in ruins, with some being used for covert UFO transportation, imagine how Sam Bolofsky's vest could have ended up where it was found. Doesn't this indicate the existence of an underground network of water-filled tunnels flowing northward? Is it possible that these tunnels lead from this location in the Arabian Peninsula to the Caspian Sea, where they connect with tunnels beneath Krasnodar, then to Rostov with branches leading to the Vadoans region, Lake Biazdone, and further to the tunnel from the Tatra Mountains leading to the Volga region? Some tunnels reveal their age, some date back to ancient times, over 30 million years old, and are already destroyed and partially collapsed possibly due to bombardment during Earth's cataclysms. Others are relatively young, less than 1 million years old, in good condition and provide grounds to speculate that they were used by extraterrestrial beings flying on UFOs. Furthermore, based on the drawings left on the tunnel walls, depicting the collaborative actions of these superhumans and ordinary humans, it is evident that these tunnels were created in the early stages of human development. Others provide clear evidence that they were built by ancient civilizations with advanced technology, allowing them to construct such engineering structures that span vast distances. After all, in the case of planetary threats, aliens had no reason to create underground tunnels when they could simply retreat to their own space and observe the events on Earth from afar. This is highly probable since we know that global catastrophes occur on Earth every 200 million years, resulting in the extinction of up to 80% of flora and fauna. The most recent one occurred just 30 million years ago at the Eocene boundary due to the impact of ordinary asteroids. Smaller disruptions to terrestrial life, such as the impact of small asteroids, followed by earthquakes, tsunami waves, volcanic eruptions, surges, and floods, lasting respectively 100,000, 41,000, and 21,000 years, also shaped our planet in a certain way. It is possible that ancient civilizations, aware of such cycles and desiring to avoid their consequences, built a network of tunnels and underground structures throughout the Earth, hiding within them so that their activities would not be dependent on what happens on the surface. That's all for me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button. Your engagement means the world to me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.